Hey everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. We're on the border of Pennsylvania and New York, and we have a 2020 Subaru WRX to diagnose. Let's go into the history of this thing. It's a drivability problem, and uh, see if we can figure it out. So, just doing a quick visual inspection under the hood. Everything looks stock. And what's the customer complaint? Well, he said he was doing his regular maintenance. He does a DIY, oil change, air filter. And he put in some fuel injection cleaner into the gas tank. He says he's used this product before. Uh, I think it was called Gum Out. He gets it at Walmart, just a little can little bottle with that long nozzle pour it in the tank and it's supposed to make you feel better right well the car didn't feel better after that he said he drove it on the highway for a few hours and it just started losing power running rough in town it stalls out at stop signs um, not good he filled it up with some you know fresh gas and he's still having problems. He said on the highway it's decent but it doesn't have as much power as it used to and in town it's not fun to drive, it keeps stalling out. So let's scan it for codes and see what's going on here. This, uh, uh, I have a feeling that on a direct injected system putting random shit in your tank is not a good idea. Alright, so code scan says system 2 lean bank 1 and cylinder 3 misfire detected. Uh, Let's go, let's just jump out of here and go into OBD2 mode to look at familiar basic data. Has a regular key which is nice. And we'll just look at mass airflow, th throttle position, and coolant temp and the oxygen sensors and fuel trims. That's what we're after. So let me select the data PIDs and we'll take a look. All right, here we go. We've got 12 data PIDs. These are the fuel trims and mass airflow, intake manifold, absolute pressure. It's a turbocharged engine, obviously direct injected. So let's fire it up. It's shaking a lot. It definitely feels like it's a misfire on cylinder three. Right there, check engine lights blinking. It's trying to compensate. Definitely not good. Look at that short term trim, it's going way up. So cylinder three is not happy apparently. shaking quite a bit. It smells terrible. Let's, let's get the cylinder number three. It's going to be that one. Take the plug out, see what it looks like. It smells really bad. You can see the exhaust pipes shaking. Blah, 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 blah. Maybe we can unplug the coil on cylinder number three and see if it's a completely dead cylinder or if the fuel injector might be clogged up with that gum out shit. Here's something else interesting. I noticed the air box was loose when I was trying to go for the spark plug. There's the mass airflow sensor and there's the intake pipe. It's disconnected. Um, should we try to connect that first and see how it runs before going after the ignition coil? Well, let's try that because this is no good. Okay, so got the clamp tightened down on the air pipe. Let's clear out all the codes and see if it's still misfiring at cylinder number three. Okay, so cleared out the codes. Read fault code, Subaru, permanent codes, that's fine. Let's look at the live data. It's gonna go get back in here. Okay, no codes. Let me select the data pids again. 
Okay, so the fuel trims are starting at zero. Let's fire it up. Okay, so it's still, definitely has a misfire. Pretty constant misfire. Let's look at the fuel trims. There's Lambda. So we fixed the lean condition for sure. So let's go into Subaru mode and look at the misfire counters. All right, there's a check engine light blinking. And by the way, the owner did change the spark plugs before the problem started. Yep, blinky, blinky, blinky. So we're, we already have a trouble code stored. Cylinder three misfire detected. Let's unplug the ignition coil, see if it changes. All right, number three coil is unplugged. Let's see how it runs. About the same, so that's a dead cylinder. Let's take the spark plug out and take a look at that. Well, we got number three spark plug out. Uh, a, it wasn't tight. B, it's an auto light. Go figure. And it's wet with gas, so that's promising. We're gonna put an NGK OE recommended plug. Bill's got one in stock. There's the uh, part number. It's Iridium, obviously. Let's pop that in, see if this car runs smoothly. All right, moment of truth, NGK plug is in. Cylinder number three, coils plugged in. Keys on. Let's clear out the codes one more time. Yes, read fault code. Permanent codes, fine. Fire it up. Oh yeah, here we go. Woo, now we got all the power. So, quick and easy on that one. The fuel injector cleaner had nothing to do with it. The owner, when he changed the air filter, apparently the air box fell off the pipe. Didn't connect that, that was the lean code. And he put in junk auto light spark plugs, either a while before that or at some point. Garbage, NGK only for Japanese cars. I know they cost 15 bucks a, a pop, but at 140,000 miles, they they're probably weren't even worn yet, the original plugs, so just leave them alone. That's it, owner-induced issues on this Subaru, so I think you'll be happy to have it back and have all the power. I'm gonna take it for a little spin. But that's it for this one. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, we'll see you on the next one, bye-bye. A little bonus footage, we're doing some basic fluid checks. Oil looks clean and fresh. What about the coolant, Bill? <laughs> I didn't see anything in the radiator. There you go. Let's see how much it takes. You would think during a routine maintenance checkup, the guy would have checked his fluids. wonder where that went. Almost. There we go. I'll tell you when. And that's good right there. Perfect. Now we can take it for a test drive. All right, Bill, spool it up. <laughs> Big improvement, huh? Oh, oh yeah. Nine day, yeah. Yeah, nine day. So, good thing it wasn't uh, clocked fuel injectors. That spark plug in a disconnected air box. How about it, right? Yep. Yep. Love it. So, this one's fixed. I'm sure the owner. Now, the owner's a chiropractor. He's got the bones in the back there. So 
we'll, we won't give them too hard of a time, but uh, yeah, if you're doing DIY stuff, pay attention to details and use quality parts. That's it. Thanks all for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.